Hi everyone, in this video we'll be taking a look at the import session data function in Pro Tools. This feature, found under the file menu, allows you to import a variety of settings, attributes and media from one Pro Tools session into another. This can include plugins and their settings, volume automation and settings, pan automation and settings, tempo or meter map, key signature or chord map, markers and memory locations, window configurations, mic presettings, and a whole number of other attributes which I'll mention shortly. Import session data is quite versatile and I'm going to demonstrate it with a few practical examples. So we'll look at the following. Importing plugins and their settings from another session into your current session. Importing whole tracks from another session. And finally, we'll take a look at another function of import session data which is importing multiple OMF or AAF files and remapping the timecode if necessary. If you'd like to skip to a particular section in this video, I've listed the timecode locations above. So let's start off with importing plugins and their settings. Let's say you're working on a session and you'd like to import a plugin chain from another project. This might be the case if you're working on a song where you want the same effects on an instrument or vocal as a previous song, or in the example we'll look at, a voiceover recording in a weekly TV show where you want consistency in the processing from one episode to another. So I'm in the session which I'm currently working on and I've got a voiceover track which has no processing on it yet. In order to import the plugins from the previous episode, I'll go to the file menu, import session data, or I could also use the shortcut, option shift I. I'm then prompted to select a session from which I want to import session data. I'll choose the previous episode of this show and click open or press return. We're then presented with the import session data window. This is where we can see information about the session and select exactly what we want to import into our current Pro Tools session. In the top left section, we have the source properties. This details the attributes of the session from which we're importing. So you can see session name, the type, so this one's in the current PTX format, it tells us which version of Pro Tools it was created with, along with the start timecode, timecode format, audio bit depth. You can see more than one listed here because the session contains mixed bit depths. It also lists the sample rate, file type, and video frame rate. Usually the video frame rate is the same as the timecode rate, but not always. Maybe we'll talk about that in another video. Moving further down the window, we have the track section. This lists all of the tracks in the selected session, whether they're video, audio, MIDI, instrument, auxiliary, VCA, or master fader tracks. In this case, I want to import the plugins from this voiceover track onto the voiceover track in my current session. So there are a few things to select here. Firstly, if we look in the destination column, you can see that everything is listed as none, meaning that nothing is selected for import yet. It's this track which I'm interested in, so I'll click on the drop down menu, and here I have the option of either bringing this in as a new track or I can choose an existing track in my session. I'll select the VO new track. It's called that just to differentiate it from this one. There's still a couple of things to select though. If I just clicked OK now, it would import everything from my original voiceover track, overwriting everything on this track, including all of the audio. We don't want that in this case, so I'll firstly change the setting under main playlist options from import and replace existing playlists to do not import. That means that the audio itself won't be imported. So now I just need to specify that it's just the plugin assignments and the settings which I'd like to bring in. So under the track data to import option, you can see that we have a whole host of options to choose from in terms of what we can actually import. Most of them are selected by default, but if you only want to import a few settings, it's quickest to select none from the top of the menu and then just manually select the things that you want. So I think I'll choose plugin assignments and plugin settings and automation. Because my destination track is the voiceover track in the current session, this will import those plugins and put them on that track. So I'll just click OK. You can see that we now have three plugins on the track. There's a high pass filter, a compressor, and an EQ all of which have been copied from the previous session. Just while I'm on the subject of importing plugin settings, if there are particular settings which you use on a regular basis, which are not already saved as presets, 
it can often be more practical just to save your settings for recalling other sessions. We'll take the example of this EQ. To save these settings for later use, I can just click on the settings menu at the top of the plugin, select save settings as, and I can choose where to put it. It makes sense in this case to put it in the default location, which is the presets folder for this particular plugin. I can then give it a name and click save. Now, whenever I open this plugin on any session on this system, I can easily click on this menu, which is called the librarian menu, and my preset appears in the list. So I'll just click this and the settings are recalled. My next video will be specifically about plugin settings, so we'll take a more in-depth look at the options available here in that video. Let's now take a look at another option, which is importing whole tracks from another session. You'll notice that there's a gap at the start of this session. That's there to accommodate a broadcast lineup tone. This again appeared in the previous episode of this show, so I'll open the import session data dialog again, select the session, and this time I want the lineup track. I'll make sure that import replace existing playlist is selected. And if I want to, I can select other attributes under the track data to import menu. In this case, it actually doesn't matter. So I'll just leave it as it is. Click OK. And there's the track complete with the audio, which as you can see here, is just an EBU lineup tone. These two sessions both had the same start time. So our tones ended up in the correct place. Sometimes though, that isn't the case. So you might need to consider using the timecode mapping options when importing session data. We'll take a look at that now in the final section, OMF and AAF files and remapping timecode. Here you can see part one of a TV show, which will ultimately consist of seven parts. It's all one program, but there will be ad breaks in between each section. I've imported this first part from an OMF file, which was exported from Avid Media Composer. The timecode was set to nine hours and 58 minutes, which is correct for this show. Here's the folder containing parts two to seven. I want to import these into this session to make one long timeline. I can do this with import session data. This time though, instead of selecting a session, I'll select the OMF file. I could also have accessed this just by dragging and dropping the OMF onto the open Pro Tools session. This works the same way with both OMF and AAF files. Straight away, we can see that there's an issue with the timecode. We'll deal with this in a minute. In the same way that it does with the Pro Tools session, the Import Session Data window displays the attributes of the OMF, including tracks and settings. We know that there's a problem with the start time, and as you can see, this is actually displaying zero. So whoever exported this made a mistake with the timecode, and it basically doesn't correspond to the rest of the program. This is where the timecode mapping options at the top right come in handy. Now, on this show, absolute timecode doesn't matter too much because I'm going to be mixing down each of the seven parts as a separate WAV file. However, I would like to drop this audio onto my timeline after the audio for part one. Part one finishes at 12 and a bit minutes, so I might choose to start part two at the next minute boundary, so maybe 13 minutes. Sometimes you'll need to map stuff to specific timecodes, but for the purposes of this video, this will be fine. In the timecode mapping options, I need to select map start timecode 2. Now I can type in the location where I want the audio for part 2 to start. Part 1 finished at 10 hours and 12 minutes, so I'll put 10 hours and 13 minutes. Just a point about the media options section. Most of the time, you'll probably want to select copy from source media. This ensures that all of the imported audio is copied into your session's audio files folder. If you choose link to source media, Pro Tools will reference the audio from its existing location. This can sometimes be a problem if you decide to move the session or you forget that it's referenced and you delete the original OMF or AAF audio. Anyway, moving down to the track section, in this project, all of the tracks match those which I've already got in the session. Rather than importing them as new tracks, I might as well just drop the audio onto the existing tracks in the session. Clicking the match tracks button will match the tracks by name. This might now seem like we're ready to just click OK and import everything, but there's one more really important setting to look at. The main playlist option is set to import and replace existing playlists. This means that even though we've set the timecode to a location after everything on a current timeline, the new audio will be spotted to that location, but it will replace all of our existing content, leaving a blank space in its place. To prevent this, I can choose import and overlay new on existing playlists. This will mean that the new audio will come in, it'll be at the right location, 
and it will be added to the existing tracks rather than replacing everything. I can now click OK and there you go, it's importing. Part 1 and Part 2 are both there on my timeline. I could now repeat that process for the other parts of the show. There is actually more that you can do with the import session data window, but I think we've gone over enough there to give you a good understanding of it. I hope you found this video useful, and I'll see you again soon.